Oh, let's see. Let me grab. Let me grab the fancy stuff here. Uh oh. Right. Okay. So, and, and there's stories with these, so this may take a minute. But so let me start with. Uh, let, let, let me let me start with some customs. All right, here's one I'll bet a lot of people look at and see. Oh yeah, there you go, Barry King, right? Yep. Wait, looks just like his. Well, this is made by the guy that taught him how to do this. This is actually one made by Don King. This is his grandpa, um, okay. the Don King. Yeah, so this one right here. This, there's people that would give their eye teeth for that knife right there. That's an original one made by Don King. You can see wow. there. It, um, as far as fancy, it's it you know it spins reasonably well, good enough anyway, and the blade is is very good, adjustable in length and everything. But anyway, that's one of Don King's uh, knives. This one here, I'll show you this, and I forgot it earlier, but uh, this was also made for me by Clay Miller, and uh, well, he made the barrel and the shaft, and he even put that little Jim L in the in there with it, um, and yeah. Uh, and then I put this this grit on there. It's kind of a neat grit. It's uh, almost like sandpaper, and it's it really is a comfortable grit. Um, anyway, one of these days I'll come out with a swivel knife. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. That's probably not it. But um, all right. So uh, moving on up, there were some other limited edition knives that came out. I showed you the one that Tandy came out with. Uh, let me show you another one that they that came along. This one here was. Uh, uh, given to me this was made by chuck smith this is uh the alan and stolman one this one here um very nice it's got inlaid gold and stuff on it it's got their brand on the end of it there uh and i don't know if you can see it but i'll tell you what it says on it it says limited edition uh number 37 of 250 so there you go that's so was uh, that al Stolman and Ann's uh brand uh well yeah I, I mean you saw that two lazy a's uh quite often that's that is their their brand that they used um on a lot okay. of stuff two lazy a's okay <laughs> two lazy a's yeah that was them um uh, um uh, that, that's what they did so anyway there's there's one in my collection that that was made again by chuck smith um and uh uh i don't know that there was anything special about it other than they were just honoring you know them uh, Alan Ann. There was also, I think, one made for Ann Stolman um, specifically, but I, I don't have that one. But let me show you another one. I think this one here actually even pre preceded that. This is another one that was made for um, Rob Barr. Uh, also an old smoothie uh, done by, by Chuck Smith. Um, and it's got some of uh, Rob Barr's artwork on it. Uh, it's got a, a wolf and it's got his signature in there. And uh, I'll tell you what this one was about. I don't know uh, well, I can tell you what it says on it, but it, it says number one of 100 um, on it. Okay. This one here, though, was uh, the reason these knives were made. And I, I, I first of all, I, I question that if that's the only one of 100 that's out there. I, I think I've heard others claim they had one of 100 as well. But okay. anyway, uh, what this knife was for, Rob Barr, um, Native American, he had some heart issues. And... Uh, he eventually had to have his heart replaced. He got a, a new oh. heart put in. And, um, of course, he wasn't flush with money or anything. And so um, they started doing these knives, I think, as a fundraiser for him, um, I think. And it's been a while back now. So he's he's dead. And and uh, it, so but anyway, so they started doing these. And, and so they went around there. I'm pretty sure there was only 100, but I do think that there may have been more than one number one. But anyway, that's a, a really special knife. Works fine. It's a again, your old smoothie type of, of, uh, of a knife inlaid gold and such. There is really a, a super cool knife. Um, and I guess along that same line, let me show you one more. This one here. Uh, Where to go? Here it is. This one here might be might be the the king of the hill as far as value and such but again there's a story with it this is one that was given to me by george hurst and if you i don't know if that shows if the light's right here but there's it's basically it's a silver and gold inlay of mickey mouse wearing a cowboy hat uh, and sw and twirling a rope and then it's got engraving all around it like this and the yoke up here is engraved and everything Anyway, uh, George gave this to me. He, it was made for him, George Hurst. And the reason it was made for him, there was a time in his, uh, his career at Tandy when he was uh, the merchandise manager. And so when somebody would send some kind of a piece of, of uh, new merchandise in, and if it was you know inferior or something, he, he would just call it a Mickey Mouse outfit. Everything, you know, if it was just 
it wasn't up to par. It was a Mickey Mouse deal, you know. And right, so right. that 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 was how he. And so his buddy, and I believe this knife here was a joint effort between Robert Beard and Chuck Smith. Um, and so anyway, they they produced this. Well, I showed this but after I got it. Um, I uh, I got this. Uh, um, I posted it out there. I said, "Hey, look at this cool knife added to the collection." And I got this call from Chuck Smith, and he said, um, "How come that's not in a safe?" And I said, "Well, you know, it's just another swivel knife." And he said, "Well, no, it's it's not." He said, "When we made those, there were four of them made." He said, "I have one," or uh, he said, uh, uh, "We gave had that one for George. We uh, Robert Beard has one, and I think Chuck said he had two. And he said we were just kind of wanting to make sure we weren't." Uh, uh, we were we weren't uh, being frivolous with these. We had had I had mine appraised. He said, and uh, when we had the appraiser out, you know, he looked at it and said, "Well, that's really cool. It's really nice." He said, "That's that's probably valuable." And then he found out who did it. So, what Chuck told me, he said, "The guy that did this engraving on here, um, he's a guy that does like these half million dollar shotguns over in in." And wow. Austria. I mean, he's he's at the top end of that game doing that kind of work. And uh, when the guy found out that that's who had done the engraving, he valued that like seventeen hundred bucks. Um, wow! So, so it's, it's just mind blowing um, value on that. So, hmm. and then, all right, I think I have only one more out here to show tonight, and this is one of my more recent additions here. Uh, I have a lot more knives. Believe me, we could go on for two days on this. But, um, this is one that, um, what, uh, in fact, I think it was the last time Jurgen Volbach visited Elk Tech Studio. He's coming up again to teach us another class over here. But um, last time he was here, he had this knife that was made of Damascus steel. So let me get the the, the um, protector out there. You can see that it's Damascus oh, wow. steel. Not only the blade, but the whole knife is Damascus. I mean, the yoke up here. Um, and that, and then I got this is made by Michael de Beer, who is in Germany. Um, he, uh, wow. the uh, wood is M. Um, that's what this is. Um, the um, uh, the, 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 this here is zebra wood here. Um, the, the case, oh, um, yeah. yeah, and uh, there's um. Uh, two other blades here. Um, there's, they're both, they're all um, the uh, uh, Damascus. There's, there's an angle and a straight. These here are um, thinner material. When I had him make this, I, I said, can you make this with, you know, out of heavier stuff? I said, I, I don't like the really thin blades that people use. And he said, well, yeah, but why? And I said, well, because thin blades don't open up your cuts. I mean, pretty simple. He said, well, nobody, that's not what I've been making. I said, well, could you? And he said, well, yeah, I can. So anyway, he made this one for me. This is the the kind of blade that I, I like, and you can see it's just got an Beautiful incredible blade. polish on it. Uh, yeah. But this one here uh, came from, from Germany, and uh, this other little thing uh -huh. here is the, is the 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 tool for changing out blades and stuff. So that anyway. Incredible. That is that's definitely my, yeah. uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. amazing. Um, Lots of lots of innovations over the years. Uh, swivel knives have gone through a lot of changes over the years. They are um, still the most important tool that we have to use. Um, you know, when people check out that video that I've done on um, on swivel knife finesse, they're going to see that I do an entire project with just the swivel knife. That's the only tool I use to complete a, a leather carving. So the swivel knife, when you learn to master it, it does absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, in fact, right here, right here, this here, uh, this feather is done with just a swivel knife. Um, all oh of the, the three dimension that you see there, all of the um, cuts that you see there is done with a swivel knife. Probably with that ceramic blade, that old faithful that I use. I'm, I'm almost certain that's what I use. But the, wow. to get that three dimension, the highlights and, and so forth, it's like doing pen and ink drawing with a swivel knife. That's incredible. Well, it's an amazing tool and, and probably one that we don't, well, most people don't spend nearly enough time practicing with it and working with it. Sure. So anyway, and For no, sure. you don't need anything that's fancy as any of this. I've spent way too much money over the years on it. If you have <laughs> one that came with your beginner set, you have all the swivel knife that you need. 
uh, this right here is still will do all of the stuff that you see here. So don't be thinking you got to go spend a buku money on on knives. That's, that's pretty incredible, Jim. And, and your collection just, you know, I, I feel like we just hit, got the tip of the iceberg, but you did. <laughs> some of those pieces are just absolutely incredible. And especially what makes them even more um, special is is the, the stories behind them and who they came from and, and um, you know, how long they've been around. And, uh, it's it's truly a, a cool thing to, to witness. So thank you for sharing it. Um, yeah, sharing my it. pleasure. My pleasure. Um, anybody that's at, that's watching this ever gets a chance to come visit Elk Track Studio, they need to because I'll, I'll I'll wear you out with with history and stuff <laughs> like that, um, and just lots of really cool stuff. So, all right. Well, that's that's Jim Linnell's collection of, of swivel knives, and uh, we. <clears throat> cover a whole lot, and I think uh, <laughs> got my dog Frosty here trying to cut in on some of the action. But Sorry. Uh, well, thank you, Jim. Again, uh, it was it was a pleasure, and uh, you know, hopefully, our viewers can learn a little bit more about all the different types of swivel knives. But the main takeaway, like you said, is is that one right there in the middle. That's all you really need to get uh, yep. to get it done. So, anyway, well, thanks a lot, and until yeah. next time. Happy crap. Till next time.